All right. Thank you, Miss Rachel. Or her new nickname, Miss Cecil B. DeMills. She's, she's the director. Her and Isaac are the director for all our VBS videos. And so we made a, we made our v, a couple of VBS videos. VBS video. Yeah. Wow. You know, you have to pray for me today. I'm telling you, I'm struggling. For some reason, sometimes on Saturdays, because I just work grave shift and it, I just get messed up, I woke up at 1 o'clock this morning. And I went to bed at, at 10. 11. I woke up at 1, and I just cannot go back to sleep. So uh, Alicia stayed over last night, so I got to hang out with the baby a little bit because the baby didn't want to sleep either. So so Grandpa, the, the big chubby old guy and the big chubby little baby just got to hang out a little bit. But uh, pray for me because I'm thinking, I think, yeah, okay, I'm get a good nap today, and I forgot I had the VBS meeting. So we're postponing that till next year. No, no, I'm kidding. No, 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 no. Well, Brother Rich said, no, Brother Rich is joking. No, it's going to be great. It's going to be a great meeting. I'm excited about VBS. Our theme is Christmas Vacation Bible School. And so we, we just, it, yeah, it's going to be great. All right. So without further ado, where are we here? All right, we're going to be talking about a new person today. Maybe. Yeah, pointing at that, that's not going to help. Is it on? It is now. All right, so that's a weird picture, but that's the only thing I could find on the false prophet. But it really is kind of accurate. Because this is going to be a wicked creature with two horns, and he's going to be basically lifting up and the Antichrist. So we're going to go ahead and get into that. Um, lesson 18, the false prophet and the beast out of the earth. We're going to be looking at a new man today, a new person. The third person of the unholy trinity, if you will. Um, and this is the part where I'm not an apologetic, but you're, you're going to pretty much start, you're going to start gathering a certain religion that's in practice today that is going to have a very big part of the end times. And, uh, and it's a counterfeit, okay? And this creature is going to be a counterfeit. So we do not really speak a lot about this guy. We hear about the Antichrist. Uh, and of course, again, this is a counterfeit of Christ. And the person we're going to talk about today is a counterfeit of the Holy Spirit. Take your Bible and go to Revelation chapter 13. Father, I pray today, God, that you would help me, Lord, and give me clarity in what I say. And Lord, whenever I, I teach these lessons, I never mean to hurt anybody or to be unkind to people. But Lord, there are religions in this world that they do have prophetic implications, Lord, and they're a part of a system today. And Lord God, I pray that you would guide me in, in my teaching this morning, Lord, in Jesus' name. Revelation 13, 11. And I beheld another, another beast. So clearly this is a whole different person than the Antichrist, okay? This is going to be the guy, if you will, that's going to lift up and point people to the Antichrist. Obviously this was painted a long time ago because I doubt he's going to look like that, okay? Uh, but this is a, a false prophet, if you will. He's a beast that comes up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb, so he's going to have the appearance of a gentle person. You know, most religious people, false or not, give off the appearance of a gentle person, okay? Yeah, that's the best I could do with the lamb with the crazy teeth, Bob. I, I see, yeah. <laughs> that's actually kind of a cool picture, really. It really kind of is. I mean, it's kind of accurate. So, all right. Um, he has two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon because he's the third part of the unholy trinity, all right? And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Okay, again, the Antichrist is a, is a counterfeit Christ and this is going to be a counterfeit Holy Spirit. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth uh, by the means of those miracles. So he had two horns like a lamb. Okay, um, and we're gonna we're gonna look at all this stuff. Okay, I spoke like a dragon. He has a, he exercises all the authority of the first beast. Uh, he 
He makes the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast. And we're going we're gonna to talk about the, the mark here later on. But we see that this is the, the, the counterfeit Holy Spirit, okay? Um, this is probably going to be a very religious man, okay? Now, I want you to just think about this. A very religious man who controls, who can have control over the whole world's religion. Now, I want you to put in your mind a religion today that there's one man over that who is sort of like a lamb, very kind, wants to help everybody, but he has control over a one-world religious system. Can you think, don't say his name, just can you think of anybody that might fit that bill? Again, I'm not being unkind, I'm being Bible. I'm going to just keep this Bible and let the Bible, dis and if there's anybody that fits that bill, you know, you ever heard the expression, let's discuss the elephant in the room? Well, I'm not talking about me, okay? So let's go on. Okay, well, that kind of gives it away. <laughs> all right. The satanic trinity, I should have put him last. But all throughout history of the church, the church of Rome, there has been one man. Now, I'm not saying that this pope is going to be the guy, but it is going to be a popish character. It is going to be somebody, you know, if you meet this guy, he's probably the nicest guy in the world. Probably shake it. Well, you don't shake the pope's hand. Someday I'm going to tell you, you guys ever heard the story of Bubba and the pope? Anybody ever heard that? I'm going to tell you that story. So probably when we get into lesson 13 and we'll really talk about this a little bit more, I'm going to tell you the story of Bubba and the Pope. Pastor, that's, that's what a pastor's favorite that jokes. I love that. That's a great, it's a great story. It's true, too. No, not really. All right. So the satanic trinity, the dragon, the false prophet and the beast. All right, the dragon is Satan. He empowers the beast. The false prophet's job is to point people towards the beast, if you will. Okay, so there's kind of a thought about right there. And so let me just go ahead and keep on going here. Albert Barnes wrote this. Now, I'm just, this is a quote. He said, and he had two horns like a lamb. In some respects, he resembles a lamb that is, he seemed to be a mild, gentle, inoffensive animal. And it's hardly necessary to say that this is the most striking presentation of the actual manner in which the power of the papacy has always been put forth, putting on the apparent gentleness of the lamb, or laying claim to a great meekness and humility. Now, Albert Barnes wrote this 100 years ago. Albert Barnes he wrote this a long time ago, okay? Um, and he gets this from the scriptures. This beast comes out of the earth, which once again indicates that he will be a literal man out of the mass of humanity, okay? Um, his position, I believe, is already established today. So... When people are looking for something, there will be a religion for at least halfway through until Satan devours the flesh of the great whore. And I'm going to use that word because that's what the Bible says, the great harlot, the great whore, okay, which is the religious system that will be in play. There has to be somebody over it, okay, and it's going to be this lamb, okay. And I believe it's going to be somebody in that position just from the way Scripture... And when we get into the, the fall of Babylon and religious Babylon, Scripture is uncanny. It's just uncannily clear as to who this is going to be. Just the description of, of even the, the, the vestures that they wear, okay? All right, uh, verse 12, he exercises all the power of the Antichrist. He will cause the entire world to worship the Antichrist. He points men to the Antichrist. And that exercising his role as a false Holy Spirit. John 16, 13. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit came after Jesus left. And this guy will come up after the Antichrist dies and comes back to life again. Okay? A counterfeit. And, and so people that may be looking at a Bible in those days will say, oh, maybe this is the guy. Okay, it's all going to tie in. All right, he will not exalt himself, but he will exalt the Antichrist. He will have direct authority from the Antichrist. He will set all men's, affection, all men's affections to the Antichrist. And again, notice he comes after the first beast, okay? Okay. Um, now, it's important to note that we as believers, now think about this. Think about this. Now, this is kind of interesting. We as believers are sealed by who when we're saved? The Holy Spirit. 
those people will be sealed, the mark of the beast, by this man. He's going to cause a number, and I'm going to get to that here in a little while, but those who are lost will be sealed their doom as our salvation is sealed by Christ through the Holy Spirit who seals us. Their doom will be sealed by this false prophet, this, this, this beast out of the sea. All right, verse 13, he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Um, as did the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Uh, he can make fire come down from heaven, as did the prophet Elijah. Okay, he'll have the ability to do great things, okay? Um, he will deceive people by his miracles and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth and, and by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them, let me see if I'm missing something. Okay, say to them, that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast. So they're going to make an image to this beast, okay? Okay, I just want you to see this guy. See the image there? And it's going to be an image, not of, I believe, the false prophet, but of the Antichrist, because this guy is going to be all-powerful. And remember, halfway through it, he's not only going to take over the temple, he's going to do away with all religion, okay? And I'm going to show you that here. All right, First Timothy says, and, and understand, Satan can do miracles. Be careful, and I'm going to be careful. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in later times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. Let me say this. We live in a day of satanic miracles and facades that, that abound under the name of Christianity. Be careful. Be careful because Christians can be deceived. We live in a day of, of, of TV ministry miracles and healings and, and gifts of the Spirit. Man, I, if you're going to learn anything, learn the gifts of the Spirit because they're not for show. They're for His glory. They're not to, they're not to you know, getting up there and going, blah, 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 blah. I mean, that is just ridiculous. You know, I've shared this story. One time I was coming back, from, I, was, I don't know why I had to go to Baltimore. It was... Something, it was in a snowstorm. And I love me a good snowstorm. I love driving in a snowstorm. But I was coming back from Baltimore, and it was coming down, and it was dark, and it was kind of scary. I mean, and I'm in my car alone in my truck, and I'm like, okay, I gotta listen to something. So I find this religious channel, and, and they're like, and it was a very charismatic, and they're, we're gonna speak in tongues today. And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna check this out. And all of a sudden, man, they started going at it, and they go, woo! And I'm telling you, man, I started seeing shadows in my car. I mean, I know it was probably from the snow and whatever. And they're going, Whoa! and I'm like, oh, I'm getting freaked out by this. It was not bringing me any closer to God. You know, somebody walked in our door right now, and the first thing they heard me go was, <laughs> I mean, you're looking at me. Look at how you're looking at me. You know what I'm doing. Can you imagine if somebody came in here? How is that edifying? You know, or, or if I go, I, I saw Benny Hinn do this one time. He had a group of people sitting there, and he went, and they all fell down. I mean, that, you know what that makes for? Good television. That makes for good television. That makes for good religious -y television, Brother Lewis. Ooh, that's spiritual. That's power, mama. <laughs> no, that's some director said, hey, I need all seven of you to fall down, okay? I'll pay you 50 bucks each. Hey, uh, and bad, it could be bad breath. It could have been bread. Hal the halitosis ministry. <laughs> Amen. Speaking in tongues, slain in the spirit, healings, charismatic frenzies, bleeding statues of Mary and Jesus, visions in the sky, miracles. Uh, you know, it's just amazing, these things. You know, the Bible says in 1 John, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world, right? And you might say, who is really stupid enough to fall for that stuff? Really? Uh, how about the millions of people who pray to a statue of Mary or a fat guy named Buddha? Seriously, man. Buddha's big, literally and figuratively. And how about people who blow up buildings for an idol named Allah? And pray to dead relatives that can't hear them. I mean, almost all your, your Disney Chinese movies like Mulan and Mulan 1, 2, 3, 9, 12, 15, 37, 51, you know, and all your, your Japanese movies, they all pray to dead ancestors. Listen, 
I remember what my dad was like on this earth. I certainly ain't praying to my dad. Because if, if my dad could hear my prayers, he's probably cussing at me right now. You know, seriously. I am not praying to my, my grandpa. You know, when I was a kid, my grandpa, when we went up to visit the, went up to the cottage, our family cottage, my grandpa's staple meal was Limburger cheese. Does anybody know what Limburger cheese is? Oh, yeah. Limburger cheese on rye bread and green Kool-Aid with no sugar. And we had to eat that. We didn't have to eat the Limburger cheese. We had to eat everything else without the Limburger cheese, which was cool. Anyways, I don't know where I got with that. I certainly ain't praying to Grandpa. Okay, so. But you know what? People will fall for that. Now, imagine when there's no Holy Spirit around to, to say, hey, wait, stop. You know? All right, verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now just imagine this. The image, not ana anatomics like Disney World does. What is it? Am I saying that right? Anatro anatronics. Amatron anatronics. You know, like the, the Hall of Presidents, which used to be pretty cool until they did Donald Trump. And I don't care, you can argue with me if you want. They were hoping it was Hillary, and they already made it out of Hillary. If you look at the Donald Trump presidential thing, it's Hillary with Donald Trump here. L look at it. They already had it made for Hillary, and Donald Trump surprised them. And I'm telling you, man, I used to, I used to love the Hall of Presidents. I don't anymore. But... They're real big on it. This is not going to be animatronics. This is not going to be giant fake dinosaurs. This is going to be. This is going to be this guy, this statue here, who comes alive, and you better worship that statue. Well, has that ever happened in history before? Well, once he didn't come alive, but remember when Nebuchadnezzar made that giant um, ninety-foot statue, and he said, "You will worship it, or you will die." Now it didn't come to life. But it had the same consequences, okay? Um, no computer animation, no animatronics. This is real. And again, people fall for this stuff all the time. I'm constantly here of, I, I saw a statue of Mary and her eyes were bleeding. And in and, and my mashed potatoes, I, I saw in my mashed potatoes the baby Jesus. I want to see that. People put that on eBay and sell it for hundreds of dollars. This is true. They did one of Jesus on a piece of toast. Who remembers that? And it sold. I'm pretty sure it sold. I probably would have bought that. No, it went moldy. Plus, my wife got me wants, really wants me to do the keto thing, so she probably would have thrown it away. And, you know. All right. All right. Now, think about this. Visions and miracles change people. They really do. Do you know that Rome? Now, you say, no, it doesn't. Visions and miracles will change people. Think about this. Do you know that Rome was very anti-Christian? Rome, through the years of the Caesars, was very anti-Christian. Diocletian, he, I mean, he destroyed so much Christian, Christianity. They fed him to the lions. They, they, not Nemo, Nero, Nemo, that's the fish. Nero lit him on fire to light his garden. I mean, they were brutal. And then like that. Like that, the Emperor Constantine said, the Christian religion is now the religion. Do you know why? Who knows why? I know you guys know why. Who knows why? Brother Jay. He, he couldn't. No, that wasn't that, wasn't that one. That was, that was Henry VIII. That's okay. That's okay. But do you know what he saw? He saw a sign in the sky. He saw a cross at the Battle of Milvian Bridge. I believe that's correct. That's pretty good. That, that was Henry. That's why, that's why there's the Church of England, though, because Henry VIII couldn't get a divorce. So, so the Pope said no, because the girl he wanted to divorce was the cousin of the king of Spain, who was very Catholic. And so the Pope said no. That's good. But why Rome changed from pagan and anti-Christian is because the Emperor Constantine saw a sign, a cross, a burning cross in the sky, and because of that, they had victory, supposedly, and he says, it must be because of the Christian God. We're all going to be Christian, starting tomorrow. 
and that's why you have the, the Church of Rome, because the pagans didn't want to die. They said, well, okay, well, we used to kill them. Now we got to be one. But I'm going to take my statue of Zeus. I'm going to take my statue of this. I'm going to take my statue of Nimrod and Semiramis and all those guys. I'm going to bring it with me, and I'm going to incorporate it into my Christianity. That's how that happens. Signs. Signs and wonders. I guarantee you, Brother Rich, poofed some fire out of my hand. You'd go, oh. Now, obviously, it would be an illusion, okay? We used to have that happen all the Anyways, we see it all the time until I love magical acts. I love that stuff. It's not magical. Everything is an illusion. There's always an illusion. But what if I really did it? I'd have three of you thinking, whoa. No, it's just it's, it's nothing. So it's not biblical. For three centuries, Christianity was persecuted by Ro Rome, and then like that, there was now the official government recognition of Christianity and the beginning of the Roman Catholic Church. Do you know the word Catholic basically means one or unity? Hmm, interesting. Let me ask you this question. Who do you think really put that sign up there? Do you think that was God putting an end to the persecution of his people? I don't think so. Because it didn't really put an end to the persecution of his people. It just put it at the hand of a different group of people, right? I mean, it was all Christians getting brutalized, and now it was just some Christians getting brutalized by people who weren't really Christians, who just said they were Christians, because some, some crazy man saw a vision in the sky. But true Christianity was still persecuted. Your Paulicans, your Waldenses, your, your pre-Baptist predecessors were still persecuted, but only this time by so-called Christians because now it's legal. I'll tell you something. Don't pray that our nation ever becomes, ever makes Christian the, 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 the government religion. You don't want that. Just pray that we have the freedom of religion. And then win people to Christ, have them come to church, get baptized, and grow in the Lord. There you go. If we made Christian, Christianity, the, if it had to be the religion of America, you're still going to have your Muslims bringing in their Muslim stuff. You're still going to have your this guy bringing in their this stuff. It doesn't change, okay? No, only we would be the persecutors. All right, so the Christian church at Rome eventually becomes known as Roman Catholicism, all right? Um, not only will this image speak, but it will pronounce a death sentence to whosoever is not willing to worship it and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So they don't only have to just worship the dude. They don't even say they have to worship the guy. They have to worship his image. Man, that's crazy, okay? Now let me say this. And there will be no sanctuary for Christians or those who do not wish to worship the beast. It will be a no-choice worship, all right? There will be no Christian exemptions. Man, that cracks me up, that Christian exemption for not getting the vaccine. I had guys come to me saying, hey, hey, man, could you, can you write me a letter to get out of it? I'm, gonna let, I'm not going to write anybody a letter. I don't know you're a Christian. I'm not just going to write you a letter. I, I never did. I mean, no, you know, I, I just not going to do that. But it's funny, now it's not even a thing. How many guys in the military, I said this last week, I know I'm repeating myself, but how many people lost their job and now it's not a thing? And it could be a thing again. How many people, uh, but there will be none of that. You either do it or you die, okay? Um, there will be no place to hide and no safe haven, and those who will not worship will be executed most likely by, by beheading. Revelations 24, and I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded. Beheaded. <laughs> Every time I look over, I see Bob and Emily laughing. I'm saying, beheaded, and they're over there laughing. That's funny. That is kind of funny. Hey, they're going to have a kid, man. You know what? When you're in that stage, you're going to have a kid. You kind of, you know, just let them do what they want. It's awesome. It's awesome. Amen. Um, I'm excited. You know, I am going to buy their child a Buffalo Bills onesie. Not a Buffalo Bills onesie. No, 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 no. A Minnesota Vikings onesie. I, I'm sorry. 
because I don't want you to defile my Buffalo Bills onesie. I am going to get, I w I'm going to try to be the first, Bob's probably going to have one. You probably already have one already, don't you? A few. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to get your baby a Buffalo, a, a Minnesota Viking something. Amen. All right. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded. You know why I think that they're going to be beheaded? Because it says it right here. The souls that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. I saw a movie one time. I can't remember what the name of it was. It was an old movie. And, and I saw it when I first got saved. I mean, before I even, before I was ma married. And, and I was, we were in Las Vegas. And we were doing some na military debt down there. Okay. And I, I just started hanging out with the Christian guys. And I was with this Christian group. And I made the mistake I kind of doubted my salvation real bad, and I made the mistake of watching this movie. I don't remember what it was called. Not Left Behind. It was way before that. It was about this guy had a dream that the rapture happened. And then and they're driving around with this truck with this guillotine on the back of it, and I'm like, ooh, <laughs> it's not good. And at the end of the dream, he wakes up like it was all a dream, and then boom, the rapture hits. It was really interesting. Yeah. So now... Let's talk about this. Let's talk about the mark of the beast. You know it was coming. Everybody wants to talk about it. And this don't work. Come on. That's the devil right there. Here we go. Mark of the beast. Is this real? Yes, it is. Now, I, I wrote some notes in here. Um, now, interesting enough, uh, where are we here? All right, let's go back to verse 16. Okay, let's go ahead and look at this mark of the beast. All right, if there's one area in scripture that has just gotten out of control, it is the mark of the beast. Pretty much every rock and roll band has that incorporated somewhere in their musical repertoire, either on their cover or on an album, something, okay? The world has just turned this into a circus, okay? If I have 666 tattooed on my belly or on my back of my neck, or on my kneecap, does that mean I'm lost and can never go to heaven? Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Not a trick question. No, it does not. What if I have 666 tattooed all over my body, on my eyebrows, and on my... Does that mean I cannot go to heaven? Thank you, sir. All right. Just, just say no, Brother Lewis. There are all going to be no questions. All right. Am I overweight? <laughs> yes, I'm going to help you. Thank you, brother. That's a good answer. Now, listen, this is a popular number, but people are ignorant about it. Um, and he causeth all. How many is that? Who's that, Brother Lewis? All. Both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand. Now, this underline that word in. You better have a King James Bible or you're going to be in trouble, okay? In their right hand or in their foreheads. What does that say? In. So you can have it tattooed all over you you want. Now, I don't recommend that because you're going to be really scary looking. <laughs> Nobody's going to want to hang out at you. With, you know what I'm saying? All right? And that no man might buy or sell, and I can see that. That's in place. And he that had the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name, here is the wisdom. Let him that under have understanding count the number. Do I have that up there? No, I don't. Okay, count the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 600, three score, and six, which of course is 666. Okay, we all know that. This is without a doubt one of the most fantasized numbers of the occult and people who mock Christianity today, no doubt. Man does, this world goes goofy over this one. But this number represents a very real and horrifying decree. And if you dumb it down and you make it a joke, it won't be taken seriously. Because the people are going to receive this mark. They're like, oh, I know that mark of the beast. Pff, I've been hearing that my whole life. Hey, man, every, every rock and roll, man, that's a good thing. That's a cool number. Yeah, sure, I'll take that. If you dumb it down and you make it unimportant, people will do it. All right? Um, 
I find it very interesting when I read older commentaries written decades or even centuries, centuries ago, I find it interesting the way they try to explain away this number because they didn't have the technology. How, how does Charles Spurgeon explain this number? How does he explain the in the forehand? A lot of people just didn't. They just said, don't get it tattooed on your, on your arm. But, they, yes, sir? Right. The name or the number of his name. The number of his name is also six six six. And so, so the name of the beast and the number of it in the same thing. That's a good question. That's a very good question. They do. Well, I know that the, the number of man and the number of the beast are the same. Those are going to be 666. Uh, the name of his beast, yeah, maybe that you got to have his name also. But what I do believe, though, is it all correlates to the number of man, 600, six, three score, and six. Somehow they all correlate. Like sometimes people do letter anagrams, and, and I watched this thing the other day, how this, they took all these letters and they added them all up and it came to the year 2022. You know, It can be something like that that leads to that number. But the bottom line is it's, it, that number or the name, or the na it's all going to correlate to 666. And that is what's going to have to be in your, in your hand or in your forehead. All right? And we have that technology today. I remember a few years ago, um, I went to Chuck E. Cheese with Stephen. As a matter of fact, it was right before COVID. And I remember this. It was the day before the world shut down. It was, I, I took Steve, Stephen got out of school early on a Friday. I was thinking it was 2019. And all the talk of everything shutting down was going to be, on Saturday or Friday or whatever, I said, Stephen, let's go to Chuck E. Cheese, man, while we can. And I'm thinking, you know, I don't really care about it. But, and so we went, and they, scanned, they, they put a scan on his hand that you couldn't see except for the fluorescent light. Now, that's on his hand, but it's the same concept. Um, there's going to be a chip. And I appreciated they doing that because that way somebody can't steal your kid. And the very next day, the governor, Governor Hogan shut down the whole world, man. You know, well, state of Maryland. But listen. Um, it doesn't matter if you have it tattooed. It, it doesn't matter. It's the technology. It's got to be in your hand. And we see this technology today, okay, because chips are huge now. I mean, you know, if you've been, if you've been vaccinated, they say you got all kinds of little microchips floating through you. I don't know. But I'm saved, so it ain't the mark of the beast. And they're floating. All, they're not in my hand. Seriously. It specifically has to be put in your hand and in your forehead, Okay. And for this group, it, it's not going to matter anyways because you're all saved, right? I hope you are. You know, I never take that for granted, you know? I never take that for granted. Um, man, that would stink. That would really stink <laughs> if you weren't. So if you're not, get saved, all right? Um, you know, I can track my children, my cell phone. I, can, I have a, I have a, I have, there's, a, there's a tracker in there. You can track your, your children, okay? Bottom line is this. Remember when COVID hit? Man, they shut everything down. It can be done. And now you're not going to be able to slide into, to, Miss Kathy, you're not going to be able to slide. Well, you're saved anyway. But I mean, if you weren't saved, you're not going to be able to slide into Walmart. Hey, God, can you get me in? Oh, no. When you walk through, they go, bah, bah, bah. you know how like if you walk out and you don't pay for it, that thing goes off if it's not scanned right and you even paid for it and it still goes off. Bah, bah, bah. Christian, no, it's not even going to say Christian. It's going to say no mark, no mark. And they're going to kick you. They might not kill you there, but they're going to kick you out of the store. I mean, I mean, they're going to kick you out. Yeah, but I got my rights. No, you don't, because it's not America anymore. It's ten federated kingdoms who are all subjugated to the beast, the false prophet, and now his statue, that's alive. If you're not worshiping that and you don't have this mark, you're dead. You're dead. You're sealed. Your fate is sealed by the unholy spirit. Amen? And, and that's the truth. That was a good question, Brother Lewis. I'm going to research that. I am. I never really put that in place. I just always associated it all with the number of the beast. And I, I believe it really is all. His name somehow is going to correlate with the number of the beast. Um, it could be the, the letters of his name. It could be their position in the alphabet. He could be Latino. 
He could be a Latino Jewish person, you know? I'm serious. And the way the numbers phonetically line up, somehow his name, the number of his name, is going to line up with the number of the beast, which is the number of man, which is going to correlate to 666. All right? All right. Last thing, Google Earth. Google Earth is scary. I love Google Earth, but Google Earth is scary. It just kind of is. I can kind of just look at the military. I can look at the Navy base. I can, I can just see, I can see where all you live. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Listen, most of our soul winning maps are Google Maps. I mean, the technology is there. Amen. That's why, you know, I, I tend to believe the rapture is coming soon. I mean, I've been saying that for 20 years, but I mean, just everything is just in place, you know, in my thinking. All right, so, all right, next week we'll go ahead and jump into preparation for the end and the three angel messengers. And then after that, we're going to skip a lesson and then we're going to go into uh, the destruction of, of the world's religious system and the destruction of the world's financial system. All right, a amen. We're dismissed. Anybody have any questions? I do have fill-in pages, fill-in sheets on the back. I have several of them, so if you want to take one, just leave one there so, you know, we have a group one.